We're tearing into a refrigerator timer today. The refrigerator stopped working, ruined all the food that was on the inside, blew the, the uh, GFI. Every time you push it in, it just blows it again real quick. Did some troubleshooting on the refrigerator. It's a really basic refrigerator. So there was only the light on the inside, the pump, the door switch, the, the heater element in the freezer, you know, just the very basic stuff on this refrigerator. All that stuff seemed to check out. Um, so we're going to look into this. I've never tore one of these apart. We're going to look into this and see if there's something on the inside that's going to tell me why it keeps knocking out the breaker. It could be that the switch in here or something is stuck. But you can see it says this connects to the motor and then it looks like there's some switches that are normally closed, normally open. So we'll see. See if we can get this open without breaking it. So I'm, I'm prying here, but at the same time, I'm pushing down on this tab right here because it's got a little notch that it catches on right there. We'll find out if this is the wrong way to take it apart or not. I don't know if there's anything in here you can service or... Looks like there's a gear there. can see a gear down in there. Alright, let's see if something pops all out all over the place. That's what we have. Got a resistor, a gear, a gear that looks like it got burnt a little from the contacts. You can see that the contacts look like they've uh, been arcing a little bit. Uh, it looks like I don't know if that's welded together or if it's forced over that direction. I'll find out in a second here when I pull on it. Maybe that's stuck and it's stuck with the heater on. That's why it keeps rolling the breaker. We'll measure this resistor too. So let's see if I pull this, if it if it comes undone or not. Nope. Didn't feel like it was welded. So it's loose. The contacts in there are definitely definitely old. Been used. I don't know if you can see that in there or not. Try to get it so you can, but they look like they're burnt. Where's my meter here? Let's see. 
Let's see what this resistor reads. Seven point three. like green, brown, red. Green, brown, red. Looks like green, brown, red. Alright, so it looks like green, brown, red, which is, uh, what, 5100? reading 7.3 to me that seems a little high Definitely have some arcing going on, some bad arcing going on there. Let's see what's on the other side. It looks like something's going to fall out of it there. That's the inside there. Yeah, this little gear right here was going to fall out if I took it apart the other way. See if we got continuity on that coil right there. We have 678 ohms, so we got something there, so it's not broke. So besides that resistor being a high value, everything looks okay. besides those contacts. So the resistor value, since I don't do this stuff all the time, which electronics is my thing, but I just don't do it as much as I would like to right now. You all know what these are. So this, this looks like it reads green, brown, red, which would be 5100, and a silver down there is 10%. Uh, so the highest that this resistor can go up to is 56 something. So that's a little over. We're reading, I don't know if I got that in there for you to see that or not. Seven point three, so seventy three hundred. 
that's a little ways over our uh, 56 that we're allowed. And that really does look like green, brown, red, so I guess the heat changed the value of that resistor. Maybe I'll see if I can uh, find one of those. I don't know if I have one like that, so. I'm going to take this out of here. I'm going to check. That's what that looks like. A little burnt. Next one. That one looks a little burnt too. See on the other side, they're all they've all uh, seen better days. First one's not connected to anything, so that one has the uh, the M on it, so that's not connected to anything, though. So I guess it doesn't matter the value of that resistor, does it? Yes, it does. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's connected to this here. I had a, a space moment there for a second. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can get a, uh, a new resistor there. Try that out. I'll let you know. All right, just have a little update for you. I got a got a new resistor in there. That one, well, that one reads the way it should. Five point zero four six. It's a uh, fifty one five point one k resistor, so it's a little under which is fine, it's within tolerance. There's a 10% tolerance on there. So, uh, we'll put this together and uh, try it out in the refrigerator and I'll, I'll let you know what's, uh, what's going on with that. Sorry about all the noise. My 3D printer over here is uh, plugging away at something. Bought some new uh, filament. So I'm making a couple of these to, to fit in there so I can stick my rod through there and uh, have it spin on there real nice. So it's printing the second one right now. So hopefully you can hear all of that. So yeah, I'll uh, we can put this together right now. When you put this together, just make sure these here are not sitting on this tall lip right here. We want to make sure they're down here in this area. Because when they're up on that tall lip there, I believe that's where the heater kicks in. The heater kicks in when, it's, when it drops the first one. You'll hear a snap. Okay. And now it's in contact with the second one over here. And then once it goes for a little bit, it loses the connection to this one and is now connected to this first one over here again. So it'll go for eight hours until it gets them pushed over there again. It's still not touching this one over here, even though they're bending over like that. It's still only touching this first one here. But when it gets to that 
lip there and that drops down now it's not touching the first one and it's only touching the second one and that's when the heater element in there starts to cook and uh, melts the melts the stuff in there in the freezer and then that lasts for eight minutes or 30 minutes I believe yeah 30 minutes and then once that 30 minutes is up that big one drops down loses the connection with this one connects with this one again and the whole cycle starts over and over again and you can see that on the back I think I'm, I might have showed you this says it's an eight hour timer and it's uh, 30 minutes for the heating element so I just put that in there and I turned it just so it hits that and then I know it's done with the heating element we'll start it out with the cooling so just have to make sure our little pins from our motor make it in that one there and that one there if they don't you're not going to get a good connection so let's see I need to do this so I can get some light there's that one there's that one alright so I got them in there got to snap it all together now I'll try to throw in there and try there's a little mark I just put that little mark there because I wanted to see if that was turning a long time ago but that's a timing mark right there I'm guessing then there's another one right on here so you can manually turn this if you want to get it into the the cooling or the heating portion of the timer so all right I'm gonna put this in there and I will uh, let you know what goes on I probably won't do the recording of uh, the refrigerator but uh, if it doesn't work I'll be sure to tell you and then we'll uh, we'll look at something else in there but um, I'm hoping it's this all right see you in a bit